Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama thriller film called Papillon. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. 1931, Henry Cherrier, aka Papillon, is a professional safecracker from Paris. His usual day consists of breaking into mansions, stealing expensive jewelry, and handing it over to his boss. In return, he gets paid handsomely. One day, after a successful heist, he meets his boss and hands him over the diamonds that he just stole. The latter inquires if he kept some of the diamonds for himself, but Papillon declines. The boss then brings forth a badly beaten up man and explains that anyone who lies to him will suffer for the same consequence. Does he just keep that guy there at all times to threaten people randomly? Thinks Papillon. Papillon is obviously intimidated by the sight, but he keeps his cool and leaves with the payment. Shortly after, he meets his girlfriend, Nanette, and offers her some jewelry that he had concealed from his boss. Badass. As they walk away, a man notices them, in particular, the necklace that Nanette is holding. That night, the couple makes love and discusses their future. Nanette wants to settle in the countryside far from the world of crime, but Papillon thinks that they won't earn enough enough there. I was made to milk the rich, not cows. The next morning, as the two continue their discussion, a sudden knock is heard on the door. As soon as Papillon opens it, a bunch of cops apprehend him. He is being framed for the murder of the same person his boss had beaten up last night. Papillon tries to explain that he was with his girlfriend the entire night, but the officers ignore his pleas and take him away. Later, at the police station, Papillon is visited by Nanette, who asserts that she wants to give a testimony. However, he stops her, saying it'll be of no use. Papillon knows that no matter what he does, the police aren't going to let him go. So, instead, he plans on breaking out of the prison. Before leaving, Papillon tells his girlfriend to move on with her life, but she refuses. After Nanette leaves, Papillon befriends a fellow inmate named Julotte, who reveals that in order to break out of a prison, one needs a lot of money. He then points at a seemingly harmless man named Louis Dega and says he is the solution. Apparently, Dega is a millionaire who has been arrested on the charges of counterfeiting money. Even now, he has hidden a lot of cash inside the place where the sun never shines. What's with prison movies and putting ass in cash? I mean, cash and you know what I mean. Meanwhile, all the prisoners are being taken to the penal colony in French Guiana by boat. At night, Papillon approaches Dega and offers him protection in exchange for money, but the latter refuses. Further at night, as all the prisoners are resting, Dega notices the guy next to him being brutally murdered. It turns out he had hidden money inside his stomach, and that's why he had become a target. Dega is terrorized by the incident, so the very next morning, he approaches Papillon and accepts the offer. The deal is that Dega will be given protection until he reaches the the penal colony. He doesn't want to escape with Papillon, as he believes his wife will soon get him out. Later, while everyone is resting, the same murderer from last night targets Dega. He slowly proceeds to strike his victim, but this time Papillon comes to the rescue. The two engage in a fight, which alerts the officers. Papillon is punished, but he doesn't seem to care. He is just happy that Dega wasn't killed. The next morning, the boat finally arrives at the penal colony. Before everyone can proceed, Juliet purposely injures himself so that he can be taken to the infirmary. His plan is to escape from there, as the infirmary is the least guarded. After a while, Papillon and the others finally reach the colony, where they will be imprisoned. The place is full of deadly criminals, many of whom have been charged for murder. The warden is also a cruel man. He gathers all the new inmates and reveals that escaping the place is impossible. If someone is caught, they will be sent to solitary confinement for two years. If they are caught for the second time, solitary confinement for three years. And if they are caught escaping for the third time, they will be sent to the notorious Devil's Island, a place where people go insane. The warden also explains that if anyone commits a murder, they will be publicly decapitated in a guillotine. In the next scene, all the inmates are assigned to collect rocks. While Papillon does it efficiently, Dega is struggling to keep up because he is not used to labor. Later, Papillon meets a boatman and offers him a large amount of cash in exchange for a boat. The man agrees, and he tells Papillon to arrive at the shore the following night. Just then, a dangerous looking inmate finds out about the plan and approaches Dega to take his money. But even this time, Papillon arrives to the rescue. He fights with the man and defeats him, although he gets hurt in the process. Seeing this, Dega realizes that he won't be able to last a single day without Papillon. By the time his wife finds a solution to get him out, he will be long dead. Hence, with no options left, Dega also joins Papillon in his escape plan. The next morning, all the prisoners are summoned to the yard to witness an execution. It turns out that while trying to escape, Julot killed two guards. Hence, now he is going to be punished in a guillotine. As the prisoners watch in horror, 
her. Julot is fitted to the device and castrated, I mean de decapitated. The warden then orders Papillon and Dega to take the corpse to the burial site. Unfortunately, along the way, Dega breaks down. He had never even seen a dead body in his life, but now he is being made to carry a headless man. Papillon encourages him to get up, but to no avail. Just then, the guards also arrive and threaten Dega to pick up the corpse. When he refuses, one of them starts whipping him in the back. Papillon cannot bear it anymore, so in a fit of rage, he picks up a rock and smashes the guard's head with it. He then makes a run for it, but poor Dega cannot move an inch due to fear. At night, Papillon arrives at the shore and meets the boatman. He requests for the boat, but to his surprise, the man starts laughing. When Papillon turns around, he notices several guards. It turns out the boatman had already informed the warden about the escape. He gets a good sum of money every time he provides information about an inmate who is attempting to escape. Shortly after, Papillon is brought back to the prison, and the warden gives him some good news. The guard he struck earlier is still alive, and this means that Papillon won't be given a death punishment. Instead, he will be sent to solitary confinement confinement on another island. When he arrives, he finds the place desolate and gloomy. There is only one rule, don't make any noise. In the previous prison, inmates could roam around and chat with their friends, but in this one, they are confined to a small room. Even talking to oneself is a punishable offense here. Moreover, the food is inadequate and bad. Papillon is only given a single meal, which is a strange looking soup. But one day, surprisingly, he receives a coconut. Inside, there is a note that mentions he will get coconuts every day from now on. Realizing that it's from Dega, Papillon eats the meal happily. This goes on for a few weeks, but the warden eventually finds out and kills the guard who is serving the food. Then he confronts Papillon and asks him who's responsible for it. As expected, the latter doesn't reveal anything. As a punishment, the warden cuts his already inadequate ration in half. A month passes by. Papillon has become very weak due to the lack of nutrients in his body. The warden again approaches him with a delicious meal in his hand and inquires who sent him the coconut. But just like the last time, Papillon remains silent. Enraged, the warden decides to leave him in the darkness for the remainder of his sentence. Now, Papillon is left in a terrifying situation. He doesn't get proper food, he has no one to talk to, and he cannot even see his surroundings. Slowly, the tranquility and lack of proper food starts making him insane. Papillon becomes so weak that he is unable to move. Hence, he is taken to the prison hospital. Coincidentally, Daga has started working at the same place. In the past year and a half, he won the warden's trial because of which he is given extra protection and privileges. One day, Dega meets his friend and learns that he is only pretending to be insane. Papillon knew that this was the only way to return back to the prison, so he started acting like a maniac. That's nothing, says Dega. I once thought I was Freddie Mercury. Then the duo again starts discussing their escape plan. This time, they choose two more prisoners as helping hands. Papillon wants someone who is strong and cunning, while Dega wants to help someone who is often exploited. They end up recruiting a brute named Cellier and a guy who is all always bullied, Maturette. Following this, Dega gives all of his savings to Cellier, and the latter uses his connections to buy a boat. Have they learned nothing? The following night, a movie is going to be shown, and that is when the quartet plans to escape. Dega is nervous about the whole thing, and at one point, he even considers backing out. However, his best friend, Papillon, makes him understand that this is their one and only shot at freedom. It is now or never. In the next scene, we are taken to the movie night. Several officials have arrived, and Dega is seen serving them drinks. As per the plan, he spikes them with narcotics and waits for the perfect moment to steal the keys to the main gate. Inside, Papillon and the others are waiting for Dega to return, when suddenly, it starts raining. This causes the power to go out. Scared, Cellier suggests they make a run for it and find an alternate route, but Papillon refuses. He is not going to leave without his friend. Fortunately, Dega arrives in the nick of time with the keys. Taking advantage of the darkness, the group opens the main door and quickly flees the prison. After a while, they reach a dead end. The only way to reach the shore is by jumping. Papillon, Cellier, and Mazaret land successfully, but when it's Dega's turn, the lights suddenly come back on. This startles him, causing him to land awkwardly and break his leg. Now that he is unable to walk, Cellier suggests they leave him behind, but Papillon once again refuses. He, along with Mazaret, carry the wounded Dega and eventually reach the shore, where a boat is waiting for them. Wasting no time, the four hop in and sail away into the darkness of the ocean. The next morning, it has been hours since their escape but Cellier notes that they haven't reached very far. This is because the boat is very small, and it cannot hold the weight of four people. Just then, they see a storm approaching their way. Realizing that they have very little time, Cellier chucks Maturette into the ocean and then goes after Dega. However, Papillon gets in the way, resulting in a brutal fight. Cellier, being the larger
larger man gains the upper hand and is about to kill Papillon when suddenly Dega stabs him from behind. The duo then throws him off the boat and helps Matarette climb back up. After a while, the huge storm engulfs them and the screen fades to black. When they wake up, they find themselves on an island. It turns out a nearby community saw them floating in the ocean and rescued them. As Papillon roams around the place in confusion, a nun greets them and reveals that they are in Colombia. She also mentions that she knows what they did and where they came from. Papillon tries explaining himself, but the nun says that he is safe as long as he repents for his sins. That evening, Papillon meets his best friend and tells him that they should leave the place immediately. However, Dega refuses, saying that their deal is over. He is tired of running and now wants to stay in one place forever. And what better place to stay than the island right next to the prison they just escaped? Papillon leaves him and heads to Matarette. But he too has become accustomed to the place, especially the girls. Hence, Papillon decides to leave the place alone. But as he nears the boat, he notices a couple of officers pulling up. It turns out the evil nun gave up their <laughs> the evil nun gave up their location to the authorities alarmed papillon quickly returns to dega and helps him up but by this time the officers have already noticed them matarette is shot and killed on the spot while papillon and dega are apprehended and once again taken back to prison cut to 5 years later papillon has finished his sentence in solitary confinement and he is now being taken to devil's island to his shock he finds dega there it is revealed that he got a harsher punishment because he spiked the drinks of the officers Dega was brought to Devil's Island right after he came back from Colombia. The two are excited to reunite after five long years. They may have become old, but the friendship and bond they had remains the same. That evening, when Papillon stares into the ocean, an idea suddenly strikes his mind. He approaches Dega and tells him that if they can make a small raft, the waves will take them to the nearest shore. However, this time, Dega refuses to be a part of it. He explains that for five years, he has lived a peaceful life without any trouble or violence. He has also learned that his wife has married someone else, so there is no point in going back. Speak for yourself, says Papillon. I'm a goddamn himbo. I'll get us both new wives in 20 seconds. Nonetheless, he decides to assist Papillon in making the raft out of coconuts. <laughs> The next morning, the two friends hug each other and say their goodbyes. Then, Papillon throws the raft into the ocean before jumping in himself. The plan works, and the waves appear to be taking him somewhere. As he floats away, Dega has tears in his eyes. In the final scene, we are taken to the year 1967. Papillon now lives in Venezuela, as he is still a wanted criminal in France. But, in 1969, he is pardoned of all his crimes. Papillon has written a memoir of all the events, which he now plans to publish. He will title it, That Time I Went Coco Nuts. The movie ends as he travels to Paris for the first time in 38 long years. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.